So the diagnosis uh, in dogs with ACL tears is based on a variety of factors. Certainly clinical signs is one, and certainly dogs that sit in this kind of sideways sit pattern, uh, it helps in the diagnosis. And when I see a dog in the waiting room that sits like this, even if they're asked to sit for a treat and they're uncomfortable as they sit down, it's, it's, it's high on my list of possible problems. But physical exam becomes important as well. And so uh, during the examination, we certainly palpate the knee, feel the knee, and we feel it for one, for thickening. And the majority of dogs that tear their ACLs develop this slowly increasing firm bulge on the inner part of their knee, and we call that medial buttress. So we find that typically on physical exam when we feel one knee compared to the other. The other part of physical examination that we use to, to, to determine whether a dog has torn their ACL or not is instability. And it's caused a lot of controversy and confusion, the instability test. There's really two ways to test for instability. One is to grab the knee and shift it back and forth, and that's called cranial drawer, uh, like opening a drawer. Uh, and uh, we've used that as the gold standard for determining if a dog has an ACL tear for years, but it's very inaccurate. Uh, we know that more and more as time goes on. Nearly 50% of dogs that I see with ACL tears do not have cranial drawer. And they don't have cranial drawer because either they're in some phase of tearing and not torn all the way yet, or they've torn very gradually over many, many months and developed all this scar tissue around their joint, so their joint's not really unstable, even though they are very, very lame. And so the cranial drawer test, uh, instability test, sometimes is misunderstood. Uh, but those are the things that we typically do on physical examination to determine if we think a patient has an ACL tear. The other thing that is helpful, but not definitive, uh, is to take an x-ray or a radiograph. And I have an illustration of that here. So on this x-ray, uh, again, same orientation of all the other illustrations, uh, we see some changes that are suggestive of an ACL tear, but not definitively diagnostic of. Again, you cannot see the ACL on an x-ray, but when dogs tear their ACLs, they typically develop fibrous tissue and fluid inside of their joint. And that shows up as a big gray blob within the center of their joint. So that's suggestive of an ACL tear. The other thing that's suggestive in this case is the femur is slid slightly back down on the tibial plateau. Now in the previous illustration where we showed the femur sliding all the way off of the tibial plateau, that one is definitive. When you see that x-ray, you know they have a full complete ACL tear, but we don't always see that on an x-ray. Um, and then the other thing that we see on x-ray uh, is a bone spur on the end of the kneecap, and we commonly see that. That's not causing a problem, but it's a sign that there's chronic inflammation in the joint, and by far the most common reason for a dog to have chronic inflammation in their joint is ACL pathology. So, so we certainly use x-rays as part of the, the diagnostic approach, but the ultimate diagnosis should virtually always be made with an arthroscopic examination. This is what an arthroscopic setup looks like. There's a scope that's inserted into the joint through a small poke hole, and then that's projected onto the TV monitor. So that's the arthroscopic setup. Let me show you a couple arthroscopic videos. Uh, this is a normal joint. So this is an arthroscopic video of a normal joint. We're probing the ligament. You can see the nice little blood vessels within the ligament. See how big it is? That's the base of it, a nice big broad base as it attaches uh, to the tibial plateau. Uh, you can see the meniscus on each side, and that's the posterior ligament that we're probing now. Uh, and again, the ACL with its nice broad base attaching across the tibial plateau. So this is normal, and next I'll show you a video of the full tear. And so once again, uh, the fibers have all been torn apart. Uh, there's large fibers, small fibers, but it very much resembles a mop head that has just been torn apart. 
So that is the way that the definitive diagnosis for an ACL tear is made. Uh, and, and once we've made that diagnosis, then we move ahead to, to definitive treatment, uh, which leads us to treatment options.